to the Kent Lap Podcast. Did you just say you spent time at one point in your life trying to make people happy with who you are? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, that's true. Hey. A lot of people doing that, man. Of course. Yeah. I struggle with that. We all do, man, if we're honest about it. We all do that because mm-hmm. we want to be liked. We want to be yeah. liked in... I get in. You get into industries and things where you don't have all the answers. Like you and your podcast, you know, you you jumped off the off the porch. Like I'm doing it. Yeah, I'm sure there's people that you would look up to, or if they sat down here and said, "Look, you need to do this, 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 and this," and you've seen that they were successful at it, you'll be like, "Well, okay, like you you, you shouldn't smoke cigars on on your podcast. You shouldn't. Yeah, you're drinking on your. I mean, yeah. all these different things that you we like. Oh, okay, I guess." Maybe we could tone it down. Yeah, that's right. But that's they, they did it their way for exactly. them. Exactly, yes. You yes. need to do it your way for you because you can live with that. Yes. If it flops, okay, but you can learn from that. But if you spend your time doing mostly something like someone else and it flops, yes. you never even got your full potential. Dude, off. that is a word, brother. Cheers yeah. to that. Seriously. Absolutely. That really resonates um, <clears throat> because one of the things that that I hear a lot is like successful podcasts are super niche. Like <laughs> the podcast yeah. is niche is like, it's about say marketing for doctors, you know, or, um, you know, entrepreneurship for founders, like that type of thing. And, and I don't want to niche this. I can't like to say like this podcast is just going to be about, um, business as much as I love business and entrepreneurship. I don't, I don't want to just talk business every time, every day. You know what I mean? I want to be able to talk about the war on drugs, yep. but do I want the podcast to just be about the drug war and its laws? No. No. You know what I mean? I also, I, so I don't know what the niche here. Yeah. I think the niche is going to be something to do with, look, this is in-person, long-form conversations, you know, informal, open, that type of thing. But the subject matter has got to vary, man, because I'm yeah. going to get bored. The niche and I want to be able to smoke cigars. The, the niche is you. Mm. One of the toughest questions, man, when you're trying to do marketing, people are asking me, who's your target market for this, right? Oh, okay. And, and they're convincing me, like, you got to narrow it down. Who's your target market? Who are you speaking to with guidance? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I, so I live this, man. So yesterday I was drinking this with some 65 year old white guys from Texas, cowboys. You know what I mean? I've been in the, in the projects drinking it with the hood leaders. I yeah. drink it with all women that smoke cigars. And I mean, yeah. this has been to Chechnya. A guy smuggled a bottle of this into Chechnya, bro. Chechnya, the country? Chechnya, and took it up on a mountain and took pictures with the shepherds there. That's this cool. Is, this has been in Mexico with Matador, with the, the number one bullfighter or matador in Mexico was drinking this a month ago. Dang. So what's my target market? Yeah. <laughs> you see what I mean? Yeah. The best, the person who was able to explain it, because I was like, I don't have a target market. God, there's all kinds of people. And da, 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 da. Yep. the lady that told me that she said, yeah, it's you. Mm. Your brand is you. And when she said that, that made sense to me because I'm like, yeah, I travel a lot. I got friends of all colors, races, places, everything. So I'm like, okay, yeah. So your podcast yep. is you, mm. and that's the niche. Interesting. What's interesting about that is that is how it worked for me. I saw the article in the Nashville Business Journal, mm-hmm. but then I was like, oh, who's this Jason guy? And looked you up <laughs> a little bit, and like in 10 minutes, I knew I wanted to have you on the podcast. <laughs> but depending who it would have been, You know, a new whiskey company in Nashville. I mean, nine out of 10 of those people I probably wouldn't have cared to have on the podcast. Hmm. So there was something about you being tied in with the brand that was a draw to me. Yeah. Um, So I think they're right. Where did you get the name Guidance? It's a combination of everything we just said. Mm. A testament to that's grandma. Okay. That's mom. But then that's what we're doing right now. You get infinite wisdom that enables excellence. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's 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 all of this stuff. 
I love it. And it's growing into the name, and I will tell you that. Like, it's a cool name. But what it was when it started and what it is now and what it'll probably be five years from now, it's living and breathing and growing. Mm-hmm. So that right now, the stories are definitely, people love to know how I started it. You know, but that contract is still in, finding it in Iowa is important. But the fact that we're helping other brands come into the market is becoming bigger. You know, the fact that we were, the fact that we were one, one of the only black whiskeys when we started was a big story. Well, now there's seven to 10. Mm. You see what mm-hmm. I mean? So you can't, so everything that we're doing now is a part of the narrative. So I'm, I'm focused on what we're doing now because this is the part that feels good to me. Mm. You know, the stuff from two or three or four years ago, it even becomes hard to remember. Sure. You know yep. what I mean? Yep. But this, today I'm on the Kent Lab show. You know what yep. I mean? Like yep. That <laughs> means something to me yeah. today. Yeah, that is cool. So do you, th- so part of guidance is actually you providing some guidance for some other. Got to. Maybe black owned companies or, or, or yeah. guys with whiskey aspirations to have their whiskey brand too. Anything that And look want. at you and say, geez, well, Jason did it. I know it's not going to be easy, but he did it. Like maybe I should try it. Exactly. Because when you went on that Facebook or wherever you saw me at, I'm a normal guy. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a normal guy. And that's the thing that I want people. I, I love it when you look at me and say, okay, he did it so I can do it. Yeah. That part yes. is important. Yeah. Because when it gets to the point where it's, he did it, but I probably can't. Yep. You know, that part, that's when we come down and we have to discuss it a little bit more because, yep. nah, I did it. You definitely can Yes, do it. 100%. But now, um, so it's it's surprising to me with as much as you're running and gunning here with guidance, which, by the way, you, you already touched on this a little bit, but getting just the right taste together and getting, every, you know, finding a distiller, like that's, you're just getting started at that point. Now you got to go out and find distribution. You got to sell it. You got to build the brand. Like that's all what you're doing now, right? Yeah. And I mean, it looks to me like you're you're running and gunning with that pretty well. Yeah. But it's not your full time gig. No, 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 no. I'm in medical equipment sales. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> dun dun dun. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you're getting up at five thirty in the morning. You're going to be in a meeting until ten thirty on a Friday night. Yeah. I hope that meeting's fun, by the way, because that yeah. ten the meeting at ten thirty on a Friday night is. It's going to turn fun okay. after I introduce guidance to it. Okay. All right. You know. So. But yeah, uh, medical equipment sales, man. Been in it for almost ten years now. Yeah. Wow! So yeah. that's been kind of a constant while you've because you you've started a lot of a few yeah. things. Yeah, 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 I mean, I've had all kinds of companies. Um, Nashville, I had Music City Dream Cars. Um, we got the Hydrate the Hood initiative, which is which is important to me. I remember that give back. Yeah. Portion. What I, is that? Hydrate the Hydrate Hood. The you hood. see this? So you see this cup here, right? Yeah. Um, it's kind of worn out but it's a ph9 generator so this cup alkalizes water without a filter there's no filter in there nope that if you can you you, can you twist the top off i don't know if you can see it but actually there's ridges in the cup and the minerals that alkalize the water are infused into this cup this cup is 40 bucks it lasts two years um technology is from sweden Guy, basically, mm-hmm. have you ever heard of? Um, there was a there was a alkaline the alkaline water systems you can put in your house, right? Yeah, I don't know much about it, but is it like um, like water like not a water softener system, but like no, a filtration system? Yeah, a filtration system. Okay, like that, but it has to add certain minerals to your to your okay. water for it to be alkaline. And so they they approached this guy with it, and they wanted somebody was a salesman. They wanted to put one in his house, and he understood the benefits of alkaline water. But his question was, why does this have to cost three to four thousand dollars to put into my house? And they gave him some BS answer. And he says, "No, I forget it. I'll make my own." And so he ended up making making these cups. I met them probably about six years ago. I did I did a lot of um, nonprofit charity work in Africa, mm. and they noticed that and contacted me and said, "Look." We want to give you this technology for these cups. 
the only thing we want you to do is to continue to donate to charity. Mm. I was almost in tears, man. Like that was. Wait a minute, they gave you. Yeah, North North America. This is all me. Oh wow! So this (laughs) patent is it was founded. It was figured out and founded by someone in Sweden. Yep. I'm assuming there's a patent involved and they own it. Yep. But you have the distribution rights to all of North America or United States. North America. Golly, man. So I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh my God, so what do you do, right? So we started the initiative of Hydrate the Hood. So every per- every person that purchases one of these cups from HydrateTheHood.com, we donate one in an underserved community. But we kind of go a little bit further than just a donation drop. We actually partner with other nonprofits and the community leaders in those places to go door to door and hand these cups out and explain to people about nutrition and health because the biggest thing if you get into underserved communities they're mostly in food deserts so when you come in and you're trying to talk about health and wellness and all that stuff and nutrition most importantly well most of the people are hyped up on salt and salt and sugar because that's the closest thing Mm -hmm. that they can get so you're almost wasting your time if i come in and give you a nutritious diet plan because a there's no stores around you to even get this stuff yep and when you're tasting it like the sugar and salt that you're already used to eating is going to drown out the flavor yeah so the first thing we do we give them a cup we give them a 30-day challenge like hey you don't only have to drink water but when you do drink it out of here it starts to detoxify their body so they'll notice that their their pee is clear in like three or four days you come back in 30 days then you teach them about nutrition because now they can taste the fruit. They can mm. taste the vegetables. They can mm-hmm. get the full flavor out of it, and they're more, they're more open and receptive wow. to a diet. But then it goes further than that, right? Because in, in those communities, most people have pre-existing conditions like you know diabetes, high blood pressure. Once their body is detoxified, your body can fight off mostly any, anything on its own if it's healthy. Right, exactly. the body's designed to fight off viruses and stuff. So, once they're healthy, there's another missing component. It's called insurance, health insurance, life insurance. Well, if you have diagnosed with hypertension, diabetes, that price of those those products are through the roof. We get you on this for a year, to now those pre-existing conditions are eradicated. Mm. So now I can get grandma a life insurance policy for $50 mm-hmm. instead of $600. Exactly. Right? Wow. But, it, but here's the thing. If grandma is 65, she lives to 95. I got 30 years to teach, come in with financial training, to teach her heirs what to do with the money they're going to get when grandma mm. passes away. Dang. Long-term plays, man. Dang, man. Long-term plays. That's freaking awesome. Because that, um, oh, man, that, that's, that's great. Because that whole thing, I mean, I'm resonating with everything you're saying here. Mm-hmm. Because health really matters. Because our biggest battles, <clears throat> my uh, pastor's wife said this at one point, our biggest battles are fought between our ears. And that's how it's been for me, man. Well, yeah. But but what's in there, your brain, it's attached to the rest of your body. Yep. So how your body, how you feed your body and how you treat your body and all those things, like it, it's all tied together. It's all tied together. So what I love so much about that, though, is you are coming in like you're getting your foot in the door, and that hopefully triggers this domino effect, which yeah. literally changes lives. And you take your time with it. Yeah. You take your time with it because you keep engaging with the people, man. You're not just dropping something off and going, and you use the people that they know. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Your community leaders, the people. Because every community has a leader or some leaders that they look up to. I, I did, I don't know what podcast I did, and they were saying, like, in the black community, there's really no leaders. You know, you don't see it. And I was like, you mean like Martin Luther King or... Malcolm X say, like, you don't see that. And I said, those people got shot. You know what I'm saying? You're thinking yeah. about putting a target on these people's back. But every community has a lead. There's not one mm-hmm. big leader. There's people yes. 
in each, like in church, we have small groups, right? Because yeah. you can't, you got a big population of people hearing from one person, but where you learn is these interpersonal communications on a smaller level that can get you way further. Yes. It's, it's almost tactical if yes. you think about it. Yep. So, yeah. So are you, are you finding those community leaders? Oh, yeah. So yeah. you're going there, finding, say, an area, it might be in the projects, yeah. finding who the people of influence are there, talking to them about some of the benefits, if they can start to get people mm-hmm. drinking out of these cups, yep. get them on board and kind of work through them. Yep. Mm. Where did this idea that it goes from a bottle which turns water, which gives water that alkaline, um, it alkalizes the water, alkalizes yeah. the water, alkaline properties is what I was after, um, to your change in lives? Did, did you come up with that? Did you have other people around that were kind of working on this together that brainchilded all that? Yeah, man. I had um, Mike Frazier, and I have to say his name because it's important. It's one of my fraternity brothers, but. And he's a younger, younger guy. He's, I mean, he has degrees and masters and all kinds of edu- like health education and and all that. And he came to visit me actually to learn about making his own bourbon. Okay. Which actually will be coming out <laughs> next year. Oh, cool. <laughs> so, but I've known him over a year. So you see this, these processes. And we were talking about, you know, he came. He said, "Look, man, I want to do my own bourbon." Um, I said, "I'll help you," but yeah, he's like, "What are these?" And I told him about the cups, and he was like, "Oh man, I can, I can," because he's he he was a personal trainer. He's degrees in nutrition and masters and some other stuff. He's an EMT and a firefighter. Dang, I think he has like two percent body fat too. Like it's crazy. So I'm like, "You're the spokesperson." Yeah, but he's the he and he worked in the community center. So his passion was for the elderly. Mm. You know, so we took it. We took it there first, hmm. and started started giving. And if you go on hydratethehood dot com, you can see some of the testimonials. Because we, you know, you can get back and forth with the science, right? People, people always want to know the science, but when you show them the science, if you're not a scientist, you don't understand it anyway, right? But we give it to you if that's what you need. Yep. But we tell people go to their doctors, and on that on the, on our testimonials, people went to their doctors, they got checked out, and then they went back to the doctors. 90 days later, and all kinds of stuff had changed. One guy, man, he had, had, a, he had, had I think, two strokes. He could, barely, he could barely walk. And Mike gave him one of these cups and just prescribed for him to walk around a track. Just walk around, around a track, I think, maybe three times a week. Man, he's one of the coolest, coolest older guys. He said he went back. He, said he, he thought he was going to die. He thought he was going to be dead. He came off of his blood pressure medicine, no cane, anything. And he went back to his doctors and was like, hey, I'm still here. And this bottle was the lead domino for that? Yep. Dude, that's crazy, man. What is making water alkaline? What You just put the mineral. So what is calcium, that? It changes potassium. The- um, there's some secret sauce in there, but... Okay, so basically that cup is sort of like emitting some minerals into yeah. your water. The minerals are already in here, and you can test it. And then so. you drink those minerals. Yep. I see. And it's simple. And, and, and the cup is not the end-all, be-all. Like, so we don't call it the miracle cup. The guys in Africa call it the miracle cup, though. It was a cool name. Hmm. But you can do this with just food. You can, you can, you can have an alkaline diet through food. This is not the only way. I see. You see what I mean? So we don't, Sure. I don't BS people like this is, you got to have this or you won't. Right. No, it's not that. This yep. for the thing that we're trying to accomplish is the easiest and fastest way to introduce people yes. to a healthy way of living. Well, what I love about that so much is, see, I actually didn't really know, but it's not shocking to me that when you're drinking a bunch of sodas and so forth, sugar and all of that, that it changes, it takes away your taste for water. One of the things that, yep. that my, my wife got me into just thinking about health at a holistic level, you know, 10, 15 years ago, and and I really appreciate her because it really wasn't on my radar that back then. But the first thing that she helped me to see is that you got to stop drinking sodas and crap and just drink a ton of water. And honestly, to this, like now, 
I, I drink a ton of water and I like it. Yeah. I don't ever drink sodas and I'm not, you know, trying to, you know, be elitist or anything like that. I mean, plenty of people drink soda and I guess it's okay, but yeah. there's a lot of sugar in that crap. And, and so a lot if you of can other stuff that you don't know what it is. So much. And if you can just be drinking water, like if that's the one thing you can do to make a change with, with your health right now, just drink more water. That is such a key thing. However, <clears throat> I mean, it depends what city and whatnot, but man, drinking tap water, that can be bad, man. Come on I mean, now. did you see, uh, what was it, Flint, Michigan? There's some big lawsuits going on right now with Flint, Michigan. They had, uh, apparently, they had terrible things in their water, and it was passing the tests, and people were drinking this water, and it caused all kinds of havoc on people's health. So bad. So... My wife's a big fan of drinking water, and she does not allow us to drink it out of the tap. We live in Nashville, just south of here. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's city water, and she has some sort of a water filter thing. Yeah. It's like aluminum that we pour the water in and drink it out of there. She's smart. So it's filtered. Because that's, that's, that's one of the things, too. And even some of the bottled water that people drink is just as acidic as those sodas. Wow. And you can test mm. it. So we do it. We'll, we'll grab some water that somebody's drinking and we'll test it and they'll show up like red and they're like, what? And then we pour it in here and it'll come out blue and they're like, oh, okay. Wow. Funny thing, you, I, I'm glad you mentioned that though about the city water too because one of the, one of the things when people when were talking about this, now if I, when I'm talking about whiskey, I mean, we can talk about whiskey all day. When I start talking like this, people usually brush over that part, which mm -hmm. I've noticed and I'm like, all right, cool. But if you think they they gentrified a lot of Nashville, right? You know, things that were the projects are all beat down. Now are places like 12 South, and they have mm -hmm. million-dollar homes on them. Mm -hmm. But they didn't change the pipes. Hmm. <laughs> so it affects, it doesn't matter where you live or what your property value is, you're affected by this. That's interesting. And... <laughs> And I'm sort of glad because how bad would it be if you had million dollar homes getting built in poor communities and all of a sudden they're changing all the pipes? Like that'd be some real bull crap. That'd be different. You know what I mean? Yeah. But people don't think about what's under the ground. Hmm. So, so if you're in 12 South right now, <laughs> theoretically, you're drinking the same level of tap water as someone who lives in the projects. Yeah. Yeah. And so, neither should be drinking that tap water, here we really. Go. They they should not. That is, is that. So by the way, we all need to care. We all. This is something we all should care about. I I totally agree. And you, did you mention that it's a one to one? If someone buys one of these bottles, you give one away. Yep. yep. Easy. Ooh, that's just like, that's just like Tom. It's impressive, man. Because I mean, and with that, I mean, we were having most of the time. If people understand, if they understand about alkaline water, they've heard about it or something like that. It's not a hard sell because especially people, they buy it every day. So this is a cup, one cup, last you two years. If you're buying these waters every day, like that's going to build up. You're going to pay a lot of money for that. Yeah. So just the cost savings is one thing. Yep. But in some of our communities, like we were having a hard time selling them, you know, because they, mm -hmm. they're like, $40. Now, this is $50. Right. They're like, give me a case. <laughs> but yeah. this is like, eh, well, yeah. I don't know. And so we dealt with the dilemma of that, and it was like, man, just because people don't necessarily understand don't mean that they shouldn't have access to it. Mm -hmm. So how do we do it? We take the people that do get it and understand, and we help them help the people that don't. That's really cool, man. This is something you're still actively selling? Oh, yeah. HydrateTheHood.com. HydrateTheHood.com. People can buy it online? Right now. We're going we're gonna to give away my goal for October, November, December just to give away 500. Sweet. Just the 500, the 500 cups because people become dehydrated in the wintertime mm. almost as much as in the summertime because we drink water less. Oh, interesting. Yeah. We drink water less when it's cooler, which obviously stands to reason. Yeah. Hmm. So people suffer from that. And it's, I mean, these are just little things that you learn along the years of dealing with this stuff because yep. I didn't know that. But yeah, we can try to get out 500 of them. So since this was a, essentially a licensed product that you have the right to sell, right? Yep. Do you buy these cups at wholesale and sell them retail? Or kind of what's the business model there? Or do you just yeah. make a, a, a slice off the top? or Both. So we 
have them. I, there's about 20,000 of these that are left. And, okay. And they're here in Nashville mm. warehouse. We do sell them wholesale. Mm-hmm. So if you're a business or something and you want to get them and you can sell, you can sell them. We'll sell them to you wholesale and you can sell them retail or we can sell them direct to consumer. Okay. But in any case, your piece of that puzzle is you buy them from the manufacturer and then you get to sell them. Is that yeah, right? Correct. Okay. Got it. And are you running that yourself or do you have, do you have someone helping you? <laughs> Mike first. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, we have okay. a small. So he's kind of your guy for that. Yeah, but we do it. I, I mean, see. we do it together because I, yeah. we haven't found the. I mean, I'm telling you, man. People, they get behind it, but they don't get behind it, mm. and then they see it. Like we gave 180 of these to the local law enforcement because those are the guys standing out in the heat in the mm-hmm. summertime. We did it to for the fire. We sent 120 of these to Flint, Michigan. I mean, last year we gave away a thousand. We gave what all close to 200 to the TSU. Tennessee State University football team. Mm. Like, we're doing the work. Mm -hmm. Because that's the most, because whether or not this blows up, it's not my end goal. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, maybe it will, maybe it won't, but if we're making people healthy, Mm -hmm. then I'm doing what, I'm doing what these, what the guys who gave me the technology asked me to do. I have a responsibility to that. Yeah. I love that. 